The first most memorable discovery I made was the destruction of fisheries in the oceans. So I used to be a wildlife photographer and kind of the insight for my career and my adult life was finding a fishing line that would stretch from Earth to outer space with hundreds of dead and dying sharks in the most protected marine reserve on Earth. And that made me realize that sharks, if they're being killed there, would be getting wiped out in everywhere else in the world that's unprotected. And I quickly learned that shark populations had dropped 90 percent. And it wasn't just sharks, it was all the big fish in the oceans. And that's a pretty eye-opening stat that if our population and our consumption has wiped out 90 percent of the major fish we're looking for, that says something pretty significant about the state of our planet and where we're going. By the middle of this century, unless we change fast, we face a world with no fish, no reefs, no rainforests, and nine billion people on a planet that's already struggling to feed the seven that live here currently. 40% of our greatest oxygen producers, phytoplankton, are gone out of 90% of the areas studied. So it's in a very real way our own survival. It's saved the humans now. And we've got to change fast. But I think the most brilliant part of all of it is that this challenge is exactly what humanity needs right now. We can change in profound ways, and we've done it in the past. You know, our history as a species is of revolution. Every time we understand a problem, we do something about it and we change the world in profound ways. You know, slavery, whaling, holes in the ozone layer, these are all things we've changed dramatically. And now that we know the problem isn't just for one group of people or one species, it's saving us, I think people are going to take radical action. And the most beautiful thing about all of it, I think, is our humanity, you know, that binds us. We're emotive creatures, we care, and once we understand there's a problem, our behavior will change because we'll choose the option that's less destructive, the option that makes the world brighter for future generations, that doesn't destroy you know, our brothers and our sisters of future generations. So I think if people are made aware of these problems, then our morals will guide us to a world that works. Here in Burlington, you know, Burlington should be fighting for the protection of big trees. Without trees, the temperature of the city will go up dramatically. Trees capture precipitation. So whatever you can do on a local level, governments work. They do if you engage in them. You know, if you tell your government, your civil servants what you want, they have to do it. And if they don't do it at that level, you just got to get a bigger, more powerful voice, and then they'll do it at a bigger level.